Now I'm going to add some stop and play buttons to control the movie clips that I've put in place here. Let's look at the timeline here. I'm on the main timeline and I've put my stop and my play button in the content frame of the bounce. Now I like to lock my main navigation button layer when I'm done with it to prevent the mistake that a lot of people make which would be to put the buttons here in the buttons layer. These buttons control a specific piece of content in this case the ball and we'll put copies of them later in this fly frame but if I were to put them in the shared layer they would be common to all of the different objects and that's not something I want. I certainly don't need stop and play buttons in the home frame. There's nothing to stop or play. So I'm going to drop those here and these are simple buttons if I double click you can see they have up, over, and down states. I just chose some colors. I don't need a hit area because the button is solid. There are no gaps to fill. Let me go back to my main timeline and let's wire these up. If I look at the properties you'll see that this button is called BTN Stop and this button is called BTN Play. You can name them button underscore play, button underscore stop, name them anything you want doesn't have to be the same as in the library it's just an intuitive name but you are going to have to be precise about that name because you're going to have to refer to it with action script so let's go back to our timeline let's go to the actions layer of that timeline and now we'll go to our actions panel let me pull this down so that we can see a little bit better and what we want to do here is create a function to stop the ball and a function to start the ball. So this is a good opportunity to review. A function to stop the ball. We start with our function keyword. I'm going to call it stop the ball. Remember there's no stop the ball function in action script. That's just an intuitive name that I've given the function. We have our parentheses. This particular function is going to receive an event from a listener that we're going to attach to the button. So it's what we call an event handler function. And by now you should be seeing this whole thing with the EVT colon event colon void. All of that stuff is getting pretty repetitive. It's always going to be the same. And the only thing this ball is this is going to do is tell a movie clip to stop. Now if we've forgotten the name of the movie clip, again we can use our crosshairs. Flash gives us this little list that is unfortunately not resizable by its corner. One of those days they'll fix that, but uh, I'm just going to put this bouncer, and it adds the this keyword. I can take it out if I want, but it means bouncer exists on this timeline that I'm working on right now, and I'm going to use the stop command. I'm going to create a second function by copying and pasting, and this is going to be a function to play the ball. Let's make this bouncer just so we can be correct. We'll call this uh, stop the bouncer and and I'm going to call this one play the bouncer and we want to tell it to play. Now if we want the buttons to talk to the functions, now we need an event listener for each one. So what was the name of my stop button? It was BTN stop. I want to add the listener. I want to listen for a mouse event. The specific one we want to listen for is a click, and when we hear that click, we want that listener to pass the event information to the stop the bouncer function. So what happens is this listener hears a click on this button, shouts stop the bouncer, which receives that event information, and then tells bouncer to stop. I'm going to copy and paste this to save myself some typing. I'm going to put it underneath and this is going to be my play button and this is going to be play the bouncer. Let me save this and now let me play the movie. 
if I go to the bounce frame, my buttons are there. And if I hit the stop button, it stops. When I hit the play button, it plays. Excellent.